make you stay away. Type of money you gon' let you let you. Big bank tight, low bank. Big bank tight, low bank. Simulation Saturday. I am your host, Bruce News, and here with me today, as always, is the Master J. Master J, how are you? Mm, very good, very good. How are you, Ben Bruce? I am doing fantastic. Swag. Uh, this week's matchup is the New Orleans Saints at. No. Yeah, no. It's the Minnesota Vikings at. No. Please. Nope, no. It's, it's, it's Vikings Saints at. at Vikings. Saints at Vikings. Ooh. Yeah. Stop I know, I just, I, yeah, I was right the second time. Oh, the new Viking Stadium. I don't think I ever played like Madden and the... Nobody cares, whatever. Uh, let's get the show on the road. How was everyone's fantasies matchup doing? How was it doing? Well... <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, I had a sneeze. Bless you. Uh, look at that guy, he's got the force with him. What what the force of force with me? I made me some rest and moaning. I had me a pop out of moaning. I had me some breaks out of moaning. I had a sis pop out of moaning. I got on a meat on the moaning. Rats keep me up on the hold. This is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, the NFL's active leader in passing yards, Drew Brees, and the New Orleans Saints. 
as they take on Kirk Cousins Jarbais. and the Minnesota Vikings. Jarbais, 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 Jarbais. We send you up to U.S. Bank Cousins. Stadium in yeah. Minneapolis. Yeah. Standing Cousins. by Cousins. our commentator. Yeah. Not anymore. Not, in, not a scrub. Just yeah, we not on the degrees level yet. No, he might not. He, I don't see him being that level. Seen a short time ago, this crowd decked <laughs> out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, yeah. folks, as the Vikings get set yeah. to do battle with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. I'm Brandon Gaunt, along with Charles Davis. Charles, good matchup here. A couple of playoff teams from a season ago. And just think about how the NFL works, partner. Eight teams that made the playoffs the year before didn't make it last season so there's always going to be parity in this league so and guys have to be ready to go because, just because you made it the year before uh, but the, uh, the Saints are once again, again six and got fielded in the end six zone. and one, six and one. Yeah. no they're not six and one. yep they only lost one game this season whereas are they six and so one, one and no I feel like they had a tie line. nope they don't have a tie. Minnesota has a tie. The they are 4 2 and 1. Very somebody tied. Oh, maybe it was the Steelers that tied the Browns. The it was the Steelers. But they, they had a close game against the Browns, too. Yep. I think there's he knows four ties. Of the New Orleans uh, the offensive yeah. playbook, terminology, yeah, there's, there's four nuances, ties. and creates a few of his own would actually no. be an understatement for Drew Brees. Uh, Banks have a tie, he too. He makes everything go without so yeah, six ties. It makes everyone around him better. Every time he takes a snap, there's a potential for a big play and a touchdown. Hey, Craven. What's up? Yeah, I, I thought you were too for some reason. Following me. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And able to break one put Mark Ingram out there. Chewing up Kamara's carries. Now, the one thing that we have been hearing a lot this season. Let's get a football quick look at the Saints RPOs. That's and a new thing I've been hearing a lot about lately. Because the big become so 2017. popular. I just want to just point that out. Rookie of the year. How about this? Over 1,500 total today? yards and 13 total touchdowns the RPOs run in a debut option. performance. Um, it is been a thing. A it's just bigger this year. Yeah. That's always been a thing, though. Breeze to throw on second down. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. These two teams, of course, met in the much dissected NFC divisional round game a season ago. And they also met in the Monday night opener last year. And Adrian Peterson's return to Minnesota. Gosh, that seems like a mm. lifetime ago. It, it was I'm actually surprised that Ginn out there. Though, Dalvin Cook, who went for 127 yards Under on a 29-19 Viking victory. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Yeah, I think that's why Traquan Smith has been talked about because uh, Ted Ginn, I think, is on IR this week and all along. Yeah. A Oh wait, you already got a punt? No. <laughs> yeah. Don't be Thomas Morstead on that punt away on fourth down. I had the run play. So. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm not. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck, and the Vikings will take over here, first and ten. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be let out by their big offseason signing from Michigan State in his seventh year. It's the veteran yeah, Kirk Cousins. They were just talking I do about hear some mild uh, criticism damn, seven of Kirk years Cousins in his play the seven last years? few yeah. seasons. In Down Washington, Cook. Mainly they... because the team is just 24, 23. Whatever. <laughs> but I also say a quarterback with an offensive line that essentially oh, introduced on. itself yeah, to each other. People in the know, shouldn't be on the field, honestly. Because what, Dallin Cook is still injured with a hamstring, I think that's all? Yeah. With big plays late, this is a tough-minded, hard-nosed, gritty quarterback that tends to inspire a team to play better Well, he's not it. supposed to play until, like, week 11. Yeah. Now a second down throw for Cousins. He's got a complete to <gasps> Minneapolis <the> miracle. <laughs> <laughs> he's hit the 40. <laughs> That's honestly what that was. <laughs> I think this is the exact thing we are, you got. 
Uh, it was, was, like, was like 68. Yeah. Yeah. The pass might have been, but that was much more of a run after catch. Yeah. That is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then it's the wide receiver. Great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? The lane has been pretty decent this Extra year. point up and good by say. Bailey. And it's now a 7 0 game. With the He's not that bad of a quarterback. Now, a very, very tight play drive that time. Play. Second and ten. Bailey now to kick this one away. I can't wait when Mike faces you. Kirk Cousins puts up 100 points. That'll be taken in the end zone. And yeah. penalty markers down on the field. And they yeah, might be backing up a bit here to start the drive. Again. <laughs> No, I've written you. Yeah. <laughs> Return team. This is going to put them back with a not great down. field position. So they really got zero. I'm not even hot lately. You know, I'm, not, I'm not overlooking anybody. Oh, no. I think I never you, you can beat me. Back, yeah. I, I don't know. Well, it, it could be tough. Not in this case. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and ten from back at their own ten yard line. Breeze now, and Watson has it right side, and they'll bring him down. Right Why is he up? He's yeah, acting like he's okay. <laughs> My brain hurts. My brain hurts too. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. You kill. To throw is Breeze. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Harrison Smith, and what a return as he brings this all the way back down to the 20-yard line. He was trying to hit Thomas that time. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing. Well, obviously, right he's fine. He got up. Things by throwing an interception. They put their he defense in a really tough spot. Yeah. As Minnesota comes he back out of the field, let's take a peek, Charles, at what they've done so far this year. One, two, and one. A tough week five matchup at Philly. Yeah, this is a team that many thought could be the best in the league. Not the start that their fans envision. Yeah, not the start. But their fans may want to reflect okay. back to last season. This team started two and two, and then won eight in a row and eleven of twelve on their way to the NFC Championship game. So maybe just a little bit of patience with them now. The deal for Kirk Cousins in the offseason, I think, is paying great dividends, even though the record doesn't show it. Ten touchdowns against only two interceptions. I thought he was marvelous last Thursday night against the Los Angeles Rams. Match Jared Goff essentially throw for throw. He was terrific. Their defense. The aspect is supposed to carry them. That's what they have to shore up right now. And their head coach Mike Zimmer says we're going to get that I done. I still like and two, three, four weeks up behind on like the Tom King here. Before he could even get yeah, I don't know. It'll be a loss I guess it's going to be that way forever. Yeah. And goal. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. And he can't corral it. Maybe a not not even close. There Oops. In the I guess I actually can slip. I think I held myself back from throwing it because it was going to be picked and then I ended up accidentally pressing another button. Maybe. What else? Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. They'll come out in the pistol. The quick slant caught. And he will score. He's injured again. That's on my team. Vikings. Kyle Rudolph from four yards out. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. While Washington, Kirk Cousins had the pleasure of throwing to Jordan Reed at tight end for the last few seasons. And now that he's moved to Minnesota, he has Kyle Rudolph. The way he ran in that touch. This is so good. But still has excellent hands and knows how to make plays in the red zone. Here's Bailey now for the extra point. 
And he got the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Bailey now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. Wow. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Go, now go, he's got to go, go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. Try to shake Dang. off the interception. Oh <laughs> my god! Couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. <laughs> Your dog Off just effed up everything. <laughs> I don't know if the audience heard that. She called him? Yeah. He was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent Just caught that just ball right up. I think like you're right. From the 21, it's second and 10. Breeze again here on second and 10. Complete to Watson, the tight end. And he's able to get up here to the 26. That catch good for five. It's third down. From the gun on third down, Breeze. But that's complete. It's Watson. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Anderson Dejo, and they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe okay. we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated. We have an in-game timeout, not an actual one. Stay tuned. Vikings now heading on to the field. Yeah, now right now they're saying, though. hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play yeah, Looking right. for his tight end, Rudolph, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Manti Teo. And he will not get all the way home, but he will take this back down to about the two-yard line. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and goal. I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think... And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown. You gotta keep it competitive, too. <laughs> Ted Ginn from four yards out. And the Saints are back within a score. 
On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. Now, last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again well, now on you. this drive oh. after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. It's complete to Diggs. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander <laughs> into some tough coverage. Cousins now. We're not here. Tight end. Here's a top fantasy. George Kittle. It's first and ten. Or the yeah. Other one. I think so. And off comes to Cook. Probably because there's nothing else to care about says, in San Francisco right now. <laughs> George Kittle says he had to score a touchdown on Sunday because his fantasy coaches need him to score points. Coach? <laughs> because the people who own him. <laughs> oh, because Ray owns him. He must. Everybody cares about fantasy when it comes to Ray. Yeah, Ray's there. Oh. I did it. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this again? Defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. But it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of face harm's mask. way with a first and ten. They killed some fraction. I don't know. It's not a face mask. Cook following the penalty. And he's got some space here. 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. 52 yards. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh! And off he goes. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Bailey now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Saints coming out now to take the field. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. Throwing on first down is Breeze. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it second down. From the gun, it's Breeze. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings that third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. They'll try to run for the first with England. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside.
So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. Kill, kill! They do go for it. It's Breeze. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. So a big play defensively on fourth down as we reach the end of one. The Vikings are in the lead early. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. Mm, nice camera work. Mm -hmm. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade. Love that Gatorade. Sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. They take over first and ten in excellent field position here. Taking things personally. <laughs> That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better <laughs> linebackers at reading a play yes. and flowing to make the stop yikes, before yikes, it turns yikes. into something big. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Here's Cousins. They'll roll him out right. That is caught at the seven and brought down but not before they get it inside the 10 to the seven 19 yards on the pickup there and now they'll have it first and goal they'll run with cook and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six only a yard that time second and goal be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. There's a couple players over there. Play the now Cousins. Yeah, he's got it. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. Now they'll run. Murray. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Latavius Murray taking it in from a yard out. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Able to punch it in on third down makes it easier for those guys on the sideline. They didn't have a fourth down decision to make. Yeah, could you feel the exhale? Because they were already thinking ahead as all the good coaching staffs do. Anticipating what we have to make the call. They already had it lined up. Never even got to it. Bailey now for the extra point. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Bailey now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. On second down, here's Breeze. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. First grab for Thomas. It's good for a first down as well. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Right. 
Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Another gigantic game in week four for Kamara. He had 181 all-purpose yards, three more touchdowns. Kamara, he leads the league in yards from scrimmage. So I'll ask my resident volunteer here, could you possibly have seen him becoming a monster like this? I think it's always easy to say yes after the fact. Pressure coming from the like Vikings, that, and they get there and that. bring him down. Emerson Griffin in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. Ugh. They're not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. Now Breeze. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Pick six, extending this lead even further. And boy, it's been a while since I've seen a team struggle this badly in the first half. I think all they want to do is get to the locker room, try and regroup, and come out to start the third quarter. But things don't improve fast then. I think the backups get a lot of play in the second half. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Mm -hmm. Here now, a look at Drew Brees in our player's spotlight. So with the three interceptions, how does he erase those from his mind and just focus on this drive? I think he may need some help from the coaching staff. Maybe the offensive coordinator says, okay, let's do a few of the shorter throws, quick rhythm throws where the ball's out of his hand quickly into a receiver before the defense can react. Maybe not take so many shots downfield, just in case, get your confidence back up, and then later on, you expand the targets again. The, the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. I love it, I love it. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Breeze now on first down. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. Well, while we have a second, wanted to touch on a new program that's making its debut that's got a lot of people excited, Charles. It's the Madden 99 Club. Now, what that is, gives special recognition to those guys with an overall rating of 99. Of course, that's as good as it gets. So through a partnership with our friends at Nike, you're going to see custom, one-of-a-kind, gold 99 Club cleats and gloves reserved for guys like Antonio Brown, Gronk, and Luke Kiekwe. And you and I were fortunate enough to get early. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked up by the Pro Bowler, Anthony Barr. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. We haven't even escaped the first half, and he's already thrown four picks. And Brandon, back in the good old days, probably back before you were born, if your starter threw four in the first half, he might throw eight or more for the game because they weren't going to pull him out. But nowadays, the patience level isn't quite there. He's going to have to make some real adjustments, or the backup may see some time. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Throwing again, Cousins on second and ten. He's got the connection over the middle of the game. He's doing the head stick. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. They'll wind up getting ten back as that sets him up for third down. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. They run again on first down. Cook, and he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. 
Two minutes to play here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. Cousins the thrower. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And is it 100, the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So you got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. He's going to get it running right. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. A great play there with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Vikings offense continues to pour it on. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Drew Brees getting ready to go again on offense. He struggled. His team has struggled. You, you talk to me a lot about looking to your leaders. Maybe it's time for him to put his mark on this game. Agreed. And how that has to happen is somehow he's got to flush out everything that's happened so far and almost start over and get back to that confident level and know that he can play the game because so far... And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by the former first round. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck the yes. interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran yeah, over the top. You'd rather have a really good offense or a really good defense. So many different things. Or a decent offense. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing him. Polluting the pressure right to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Four yards on that. the pickup. Okay. And that'll make this a second down. This will receiver? use the SWAT mechanic to push yeah, actually it was. The There's pass. a running back who oh, was a receiver that on the play. I think he's been spending time I in the receiver drills getting his feet I down. Those well, guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd learned to ballet school. Got the toes down what and the? stayed in bounds. What's going on with you, Kevin? Right side of the tight end, Rudolph. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Cousins on first down. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45. No, I'm glad he's sacked. He's going to be a pick. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. From the gun, here's Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. The Vikings on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. This is going to be third and 13. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And 
this is going to be incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. Looks like the offense is going to take another shot here. They're going on fourth and 13. To throw is Cousins. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Ken Crowley, and he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. And, Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. So after the INT, it's Breeze. He goes underneath to Ingram. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here's Breeze to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. It's the defense calling the timeout here as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. The clock showing just 16 seconds till the half as they line hey guys, up first and 10. Us, this is our live recording of Simulation Saturday. Following the interception, yeah, the Cousins. Free. The collision there jarred the We're ball loose and brings up second down. So and as you can see, it's not looking too, too pretty right now. I suck. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. A second down throw for Cousins. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. Damn. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. Where am I at this way? Yeah, the other four is more. Cousins now over 200 yards already in this first half. It's first and 10. Cousins now. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Final play of the half. Cousins lets it fly for Treadwell. 
And incomplete oh. on the deep ball. Anyway. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota I with the Vikings the on the top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take this you around great. the NFL, <laughs> oh. give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. He's dead. But no, he, he, so now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin mm -hmm. the third. They had a big first half. Now they have a chance to add to that lead here in the opening possession of the second half. And everyone always asks about halftime adjustments, kind of the key phrase. What did you do at halftime? Well, the way they ran offense in the first half, I think they were very calm, congratulatory. But also what they were saying is, don't expect them to be the same on defense. They'll be the ones making the adjustments. Let's see what they do, and we'll attack accordingly. And we'll see how they attack here. And it work his way across the 30 to the 32. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one. Maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. The Vikings on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And Rudolph has it to tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. A first down throw for Cousins. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And that animation got me out of bounds. <laughs> that did not help me. Sorry, it's going back. Holding. Offense. Umpire through the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpire's got different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Cousins. And Diggs has it. Wow. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That's Lark and the Duff Minster. He just blurted that out. Well, yeah. in the back. Offense. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I guess I'm not supposed so to score on this drive. <laughs> for not on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys Jeez. who just gave up that play. They don't like my score. No, I don't like your score. Throwing his cousins. And he will find his man on the outside. A good pickup after the penalty. 12 yards, and it's second down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow. A six foot six inch target. It is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can. And the ball is knocked out. 
<laughs> that was the lightest fumble of all time. <laughs> okay, great job, man. Great job. Are you kidding? Clearly, I was oh. Clearly, I was not in the wow. scoring stride. Okay. Prove my love. Yeah, that's a bomb. Oh no, wait, 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 hold on. His knees, man. Oh my God. Seems so freaking smart. Ray. Ray for Ray. Uh. The Vikings on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and seven. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. And that is incomplete. A hat tip to P.J. Williams there defensively, making sure that one didn't find its target. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So it looks like the offense isn't going anywhere. They're going to go for it on fourth and seven. They'll indeed go for it. It's Cousins. It's caught by Treadwell. Facing a fourth down, they come away with 18 yards and the first down conversion. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. Cousins now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. A give, this is caught. And he'll snag about five nice. yards down to the 32. And they're gonna speed things up here. Line out, line out. Again, it's Cook. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Third and short yardage, Cousins, and he's able to find Diggs. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. A Vikings first down, Diggs able to find his way free and get the catch from Cousins. They run with Cook, he's been busy tonight, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Throwing Cousins. It's incomplete. That guy was looking behind him. He's just like, I know exactly where that ball is going. Yeah, it's laughing. It's right happy. Now. This is when force meets force. Got to be physical in order to win this battle. <laughs> yeah, that's where the physicality pays off. A nice job forcing the contact and forcing the incompletion. <laughs> yeah, Coach Ford would have loved that play. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. To throw, Cousins. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball in their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. Two incompletions haven't moved him any closer. And likely throwing again, you'd have to think, on third and goal here. They'll throw again. Cousins finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And they are able to get nine yards out of that, but now it's fourth down. They converted once earlier on this opening drive, but now comes a big test. Fourth and goal. 
<laughs> what? Why are there so many goddamn white people? <laughs> He's got a good point. Vikings have a lot of white people. <laughs> They're like the Minnesota Patriots. The Minnesota Patriots. He keeps carrying the ball into oh the my end god. Zone. And in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to answer your question with back. that one. He's not minding the extra weight at all. I don't discriminate. Yeah. NFL might be like 80% black. Yeah. We have the Patriots have most of the white people. Adam Thielen's the best receiver in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. Right now. Well, that's all I got. What was that? What was what? The little dance move you just did. I just shimmy. Because <laughs> my ass was itching. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the stream, guys. If you like to see this and follow, uh, I suck, so there's that. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, <laughs> and it comes out to the 25. <laughs> now the attention turns to the Saints <laughs> offense, getting ready for their first possession of the second half. <laughs> <laughs> the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what oh adjustments my were made in that locker room. And I never want That's to make fast. something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want oh. to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half. <laughs> what is that? Bruce, your sister's talking to you. Hi, Jeff. Yeah, the dishwasher's clean, Jeff. Yes. And I know that the most recent time it happened, the guy who threw him. Of course. The play, the ruling on the field stands. There's no reason they even wrote you that. I reviewed it. I'm just astonished he caught that. This game makes no sense. They won't. They won't catch one straight at him. They'll catch that. First and ten, Cousins. He'll find Thielen working the middle. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Well, I'm glad you like me, and thank you for that follow. There, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Nothing can go my way. Well, Cousins. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. He's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy. Everything has to be yeah. pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You what I do? What the heck did you do? Nice you trying to cheat me? I still hit the start, start game button on this. My bad. Adam Thielen yards. broke the game. <laughs> and now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Encroachment defense. Mm. So we jump there defensively. That's I mean, it only made sense to give you back the ball. You won't have the, 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 ball, the whole the ball the whole damn board. Until the ball moves. So the ball's moved to about the one. Hey, I try to score as fast as possible for you. They'll run for it with Cook, and this one will wind up with him losing yardage. I'm trying not to make you score at home, but it somehow damn happens. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. I wouldn't have thought that you were trying to get me to lose this game. Out so far as we get set. For the fourth quarter, a very one-sided affair. From back at the four, here's second and goal. They come up at an offset eye. He's going to get it running right. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. 
they're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Here's Cousins. The quick slant. Like, why is nobody ever He'll get somebody? into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Kyle Rudolph. A beast in the red zone. That white guy did. Second touchdown of the game. And the Vikings offense continues to pour it on. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that. <laughs> he tries to Already if we had no touchdowns. Off of this win. So I know. Strong. Any touchdown is the one I basically Dan gave you. Yeah. Where he was, as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Out is the Saints yeah, the offense now as they get ready to take over really here. My worst game so far. Time, I actually know every game I've had. So, so bad. So Man 19. Man 19. Be yep. Worst game was um, <laughs> That's a good way of when we were still playing 18. And I can't wait to see they decide to do a play call. Because ball. a one play drive where you throw an interception. A lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action. You tip tap toe on the side lean. And let him fling another one. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Hey, easy. He really wants to kill people. On second down, here's Breeze. Ooh. And a hit charge. What? It's incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that way. incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. From the gun on third down, Breeze able to fight through one tackle. That's to his running back, complete. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. We're good, we're good. Five, four, ready. Record, record. Now Breeze got to have this one. Hey! Hey! It was Bruce. No, it was Bruce, not the door. With that interception, he just set a record that nobody ever wants to set, and that's the most picks ever in an NFL game. Eight. That's what you get. Eight. Eight. The last time we saw seven, 2001, right? Yeah. It's Ty Detmer. He's with the Lions at that time. To get to eight. Are we sure he knows what color jerseys his team's wearing in this one? Ah, oh, that's bad. Guys. Oh, no. <laughs> Even if it gets caught, it's so nice bad, bad. I thought your uh, yeah, corner was coming back. Cousins the thrower. Escaping the pressure right. Jeez. Yeah, and he is going to be run down. What a disaster there. A huge loss. Cameron Jordan. He's the one that finally ends up corralling him. And my goodness, that is a disastrous loss. First down, a bit of a disaster. And now on second goal, <laughs> so back far. even further. I was so stupid. I should just threw it away. Play fake. Cousins. This Somebody catch the ball. <laughs> Like, why is nobody on people? You're playing man-to-man -man coverage. It's not always a good thing, T. I know, but... <laughs> You're getting burned by Kyle Rudolph. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I don't know that they need to add any so more right now, though. I'm just starting to think about those dinner plans tonight, my friend. Right, so yeah. Well, you and I, we think about dinner plans, but we also know that plain people are thinking, how can I get some more scores kicker. for my fantasy? I forget a rough ending, buddy. They're trying to figure that part out now. By the way, last week, I am not sure somebody passed because away. that's what you wanted. We're going steak tonight. I'm in. All right. Bailey now to kick this one away. Might have knifed down a little bit. That's fielded in the end zone. Uses the spin. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily to look at your plays. Oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z <laughs> and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Breeze will try again on second down. He dumps it down to Ingram, and they're able to bring him down at the 20. It'll be a pickup of just two, and just like that, it's third down. Shotgun now for Breeze. Flush to his right. And a third down pass falls incomplete. <sighs> Man, this defense is tough. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten I much better. Thought gonna all that down. does oh, is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. The Vikings after it, and they get there for the sack. Emerson Griffin in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Oh, the lonely punter inside their own 20 figured for sure they were punting this away. They did not, and the move does not pay off. You think someone put up the stop signal when he started to trot over the sideline? <laughs> nope, nope, no, son. We're going to go for it here. Usually when you see a team do wow. these types of things, it's because they're so dominant that they don't believe that they can get beat. This is much more of what you see in a high school game, maybe some of those mismatched college games. But in the NFL, any given Sunday is a phrase they take seriously. And guess what? That was probably going to backfire. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Was this from today? Oh, yesterday. To throw is cousin. This will be caught just inside the ten. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. The Vikings on third down. They've been really good, converting seven of their ten tries. This is third and seven. Cousins. Flushed out right. He may try to oh, run for this. He opted to go dead. with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. Now what? everything here, we're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Things looking pretty good on the scoreboard. They're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth.
He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They get six yards going for it on fourth, and now it's first and goal. Time for a break. This one all over, but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. They'll try to run it in with Murray. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. The play that time and Jackie and them? Second and goal. Uh, Jess is still here. Right I don't the think they went out. No gain, but don't let and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. And my friend, I think it's safe to say that this game is pretty much deceased at this point. It's <laughs> taken a knee, so to speak. It is definitely this victory formation. Take the snap, take the knee, call it a night, you know, call it a game, call it whatever. I agree with you totally. I don't think there's much left to get except for those who want to run up the score. I, I knew this was over about a minute ago when you took your stat sheet and just flipped it over your shoulder in the trash can. Yeah, that's, that's why. And that's similar to the guys cutting tape off yeah, right before yeah. the game's over. We know this thing's done. A drive that time of six plays. And it was capped off by the quarterback sneak for six. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team, and we were losing late in a game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. The Saints on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and ten. Breeze now to throw. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And he's going to score. It's a flanking touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well prepared. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. Tight in right, tight in right. Ready. Now Breeze to try again after the pick six. He's going to let it fly. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The former Pro Bowl linebacker Anthony Barr there to jar it free. But I guess that answers the question whether or not they want him throwing it again right away after throwing the pick six on the previous drive. Yeah, not something conservative or underneath. Pretty big shot right there. Get him right back in the saddle and say, go ahead and sling it, big guy. 
Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. And now here's another interception. Xavier Rhodes with a pick. Thomas, the intended target. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And now out comes Minnesota. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. <laughs> when do you go no, to the backup and no, no. let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And that will extend this big lead. Bailey now to kick this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Marching back out there, ready for the next possession. Here comes the Vikings defense. They have played a really good game. They're just looking for one final stop here and celebrate this victory. And if you're on offense, you don't want them to have that satisfaction. You know that you're not going to win the game. But you don't want them to roll in those big grins on their faces. So you want to come up with something right here. Some type of a big play to dent that good mood. And they're going to be trying to not let that dent happen and go home happy. Looking for more there on first down. But this throw down field, incomplete. Line of scrimmage. Again, the 25, second and 10. Good, good, good. Five, four, ready. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Breeze again here on second and 10. And my goodness, another interception. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Facing this fourth quarter deficit, felt like they had to throw the ball, and on the other side, they were ready. No doubt about it. They're playing situational football. They look at the clock. They know the lead that they have, and all they're doing is playing pass on every down. Playing the pass, picking it off, and now big time in the driver's seat. Cousins. His throw incomplete. Check curls, check curls, check curls. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing here, Cousins. He'll buy some time right. No, oh, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. On third down, Cousins. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. I'm come back. I'm Picked up by Ken Crowley. <laughs> and they will finally nice get him down as he's all the way to the 36-yard line. Pass interference. Defense. Of course. Yeah, I can't get well, nothing. You won't hear any boos from this home crowd on that call. No, not at all. And it's been a long day for this crowd. Waiting for this game. It's been a long evening as well. Finally, they feel they got a call. Now to throw on first down. And this will be caught. 
And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. I tell you, Charles, you play to the final whistle, I get that, but there are a few folks that might not be too happy with that score late in the game with it already well in hand. You seem a little squeamish about that last I, score. I struggle with it. <laughs> I struggle. But on the other, the, the argument, I get it on the other side, is, hey, do something about it. Stop them. I guarantee you, I know it was really excited. Fantasy owners yeah. who had them. They listen, get the points from me. They're not worried about hurt feelings or anything like that. That's just new age stuff. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. What can do at this point. One final try here for Breeze. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. As time has uh, run out well. on this football game. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. Somebody was chucking it deep a lot. Yeah. Ah. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis. All right. Those stat lines are sexy. <laughs> Ten. Ten. I think Nathan Peterman's put up better days there. I think so too. Yeah. Um, okay, so the real game. Uh, I think final score Saints will win this game. Give it 35 20. 35 24 Saints. I actually like that. That's a Minnesota's defense actually hasn't been that great. But yeah. This game is. This game, I don't know what good. it does. I don't know why. Um, yeah, you know, Saints are going to go on the same nine-game winning streak that they did last year and do really, really good. Um, they're going to get the comeuppets, that's for sure. Um, Drew Brees is going to keep on this role of having a historic season so far. Um, so yeah, uh, Saints are going to come out on top. Uh, what was your score? Uh, 35, 20, 24? Yeah, 35, 24. Um, you know what? I like that score, 35, 24. That sounds about right. I think I think they can do that. Unless if they pull like a rabbit out of the hat, just do like, eh, you know what? 35, 21. Yeah. 35, 21 is my final score. So, that does it this week for this week's edition of Simulation Saturday. If you like what you saw here on Twitch, please leave us a follow. We much, very much appreciate it. Uh, this is going up on YouTube this Saturday, so be sure to check that out. Uh, if you like you see over there, hit that subscribe button. Or you can join much more great content like that. Face on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Be sure to, once you subscribe, to hit that notification button because we do try to upload every day, so don't miss out on that. Um, so... Yeah, join us for next week's uh, matchup when we tackle the Green Bay Packers at the New England Patriots. It's going to be a good one. Um, so, yeah, for myself, uh, Master J, um, we hope to see you guys in the next video. So, later. Later. Bye. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, yeah, smack the bell button, too. I said that.